Okay, so we are going to continue with the cloning of the spike gene and as I said earlier we are going to clone first it in, in a general purpose cloning vector but cloning strategy everything will remain the same so first of all what we are going to do we are going to use uh, <coughs> total RNA and this total RNA will be converted into cDNA so First, we are going to have synthesize cDNA reaction. Okay. So this total RNA uh, <clears throat> from patient sample, uh, we will mix it with, you can think of using oligo DT primers, as I told you earlier, and because messenger RNAs, they have this long stretches of polyase, and uh, T, long Ts, they will be complementary to oligo, D, uh, oligo A's, and then uh, reverse transcriptase will uh, uh, synthesize the cDNA. So total RNA is, may, or there is another kind of primer we normally use in our labs are called random hexamers. These are just a cocktail of primers, random six nucleotide sequences, and one of them, you know, is complementary to uh, your gene of interest. So let's say we took uh, oligo DT primer. Uh, you have the uh, total RNA, oligo DT, and uh, you mix X microliter, Y microliter, uh, the total reaction is usually 10 microliter here. You heat everything uh, at 55 degrees Celsius or so, so that any of the messenger RNAs, if they have the uh, secondary structures, you know, they are, they are broken and then primers easily can anneal and bind you. After uh, 10 to 15 minutes, at 55 degrees Celsius, what we do now in this uh, mix, uh, what we do, we start adding the nucleotides. We add reverse transcriptase. This is an enzyme which synthesizes DNA using RNA as a template. And we add, you know, a buffer for the enzyme. We also add uh, inhibitor RNA uh, RNA's inhibitor. Because remember, RNA is a very sensitive molecule as compared to DNA. RNA quickly gets degraded. So this inhibitor will ensure that during this reaction, our uh, RNA does not get degraded. <clears throat> Because RNAs, is, they are very common, they are on our fingertips as well. Uh, so when you deal with RNA molecules, you have to take extra care. And you set up the whole reaction in such a way, so this is one reaction and you prepare a parallel reaction, keeping everything same, but in that reaction, you don't have the reverse transcriptase. Okay? You don't have in that everything same, but in that Experiment, uh, that reaction you don't have reverse transcriptase which means no cDNA will be synthesized and we call that so this one is called this reaction will be called your RT plus reaction in which you have reverse transcriptase the parallel reaction is called RT minus in which everything is present except reverse transcriptase and that will act as your control to make sure whatever we eventually amplify and test is actually coming from RNA and not from some genomic DNA contamination and you know non-specific binding of our primers to the DNA. So once we have this cDNA, now let's imagine we have after this in your PCR tubes this is our RT plus RT minus you have everything here in this one it's RT minus you don't have the reverse transcriptase now what has happened you have from viral 
RNA due to reverse transcriptase you have made cDNAs or copy DNAs of whatever genes or transcripts are present there cDNA, copy DNA now these cDNAs they are going to act as a template for us and we are going to use them in standard PCR uh, using our spike specific primers okay so this RNA because you know this is a copy this cDNA let's assume this is our spike gene cDNA so you have RNA DNA hybrid this is DNA because reverse transcript is using oligo DT primers have copied this <coughs> RNA sequence into DNA or spike RNA okay now once you have it you could have done this with random hexamers as well or spike specific primer can be used as well okay uh, so you have this cDNA copy and this cDNA copy will act as a template to be amplified in normal PCI using spike specific primers and this RNA molecule in this RNA DNA hybrid is you know simply degraded once you finish this uh, uh, reverse transcriptase reaction <clears throat> in the same while you simply add RNAs H and that will selectively degrade this uh, RNA DNA hybrid and the RNA molecule will be degraded you will have uh, you know only the intact cDNA now you remember we designed primers for spike gene and now when we will amplify this spike gene after synthesis of cDNA this PCI is called RT-PCR RT for reverse transcription because we have gone through process of reverse transcription and PCR because we are going to amplify the DNA so let's now go and see here you have now your cDNA of spike gene you designed already primers for spike and when you will use this cDNA from this one you have to use from this one as well to ensure that this is really coming from uh, RNA of virus and there's no con contamination of DNA or any other sort okay or non-specific action of primers so you use this cDNA as template and you add the PCR primers so you simply prepare a PCR reaction your PCR reaction will consist of template template as what? the cDNA you synthesize after RT reaction you will have buffer for PCR reaction so X microliter, A microliter you will add nucleotides DNTPs deoxy nucleotides nucleotide triphosphates you will add now polymerase and you remember I told you we use uh, not tag polymerase here because our purpose is to express it it's not just yes no kind of PCR present or absent we want to express this gene in eventually in bacteria so we have polymerase and C microliters and then we have polymerase nucleotides buffer template okay and then the total reaction we make let's say 50 microliter or so now what is going to happen in PCR oh yeah primers sorry I forgot the primers primers forward plus reverse of spike okay uh, equal amount of primers you add now what is going to happen in PCR let's have just a recap of PCR so the spike DNA 
we will program the PCI machine 95 degrees Celsius at 95 the spike cDNA is going to denature our primers which we designed to amplify this which had you remember EcoR1 and XPA1 sites they will bind specifically to their complementary sequences This is very important to, to stay anti-parallel. And we, after 30 seconds, the machine will cool down and the annealing temperature, let's say it's 60 degrees Celsius, primers come and they bind. And now the machine will go to extension phase which is 72 degrees Celsius and what will happen in extension phase you will have synthesis of complementary strand. So you program the machine 95 degrees Celsius the denaturation annealing and extension 30 seconds 30 seconds and spike gene is let's say 2.5 kb or 3 kb whatever is the size let's say we give 3 minutes so 30 seconds 30 seconds annealing and 3 minutes extension and you tell the machine PCI machine to repeat this 35 cycles so after 35 cycles let's say you had here you know 10,000 copies of spike gene when you started uh, synthesizing cDNA in the template where you made cDNA, let's say you had 10,000 copies of uh, spike specific cDNA and after 35 cycle, every cycle it goes into 2, so 10,000 will go into 20,000, after next cycle 20,000 will go into 40,000, next cycle 14 to 80, 18 to 160, so exponential increase gives you millions of copies of spike gene. After PCR, what you do, you run agarose gel electrophoresis and since you have used in the PCR two independent reactions RT plus template and RT minus template so your PCR gel will look like this so let's say the product size of spike is 2.5 kb cDNA so you have the molecular size the, the DNA ladder so 500 base pair 1 kb 2 kb 3 kb 4 5 6 this is the marker DNA marker and you run your PCR let's say you have PCR from RT plus PCR from RT minus and this is your simply water control that your water is not contaminated <clears throat> in a successful PCR you will see only a very specific band from template which contained reverse transcript is nothing here and nothing in the water so this is your successful amplification of spike gene now the point is <clears throat> that is just the beginning that is not the end we said we are first going to clone it in general purpose cloning vector. So general purpose cloning vectors, uh, they don't have this bacterial expression promoters or any kind of promoters. They usually have this TNA, uh, T7 uh, sequences, uh, T7 promoter sequences which we use for uh, T7 or M13 uh, sequences, uh, sequences which we use for sequencing of our gene of interest. So what we do now after uh, you know successfully amplifying sp spike gene uh, we now go and clone it and you remember uh, cloning in cloning I told you construct and that is we need a vector and when I'm saying again and again general purpose cloning vector the general purpose cloning vector we use no I mean bio 100 lab as you know uh, blunt end ligation vector or TA cloning vectors okay 
uh, <coughs> these enzymes or polymerases what they do when they <coughs> when they finish uh, for this is a property of tag polymerase when it finishes the uh, PCI amplification uh, at the three prime end you know it just adds an A overhang in every PCR product. This is very specific characteristic of uh, tag polymerase. But mostly the enzymes which we use, uh, which contain the proofreading activity when we are dealing with expression, which is the case here, uh, they don't add A overhang. They just precisely uh, finish right here. Uh, if you use T, uh, A overhang, the, if, if you have used uh, tag polymerase, the benefit of uh, having uh, amplification by tag is you can simply use vectors which are generated which contain you know T overhangs. So they have bacterial plasmids, uh, they are called TA vectors. And these vectors, just like they have the same other characteristics, origin of replication, then the canamycin gene or ampicillin gene, whatever, and they are not completely circular because they contain T's on their ends. And when you will make ligation of your PCR product with this, this T is complementary to A here. Uh, sorry, I added on the wrong side. And this T will be complementary to A here in the presence of ligase. This will be easily ligated. But since we use proofreading uh, enzyme, enzyme which is not going to add anything. Uh, there is another uh, vector we routinely use in, uh, our, in our labs, it's called, uh, it's also same uh, strategy, but in this case not TA. We have this commercially available vector and we call this vector zero blunt cloning vector. So this zero blunt uh, cloning vector is similar to TA vector, but it does not contain T overhangs. It's perfectly blunt ended on both sides, but it is inhibited from being self circularized because if you provide two blunt ends on the one hand you have phosphate on the other hand you free hydroxyl it can self ligate in the presence of ligase but you don't have phosphate hydroxyl groups here so they will be contributed by rpcr product so we have this zero blunt uh, cloning vector it's 3.9 kb in size, it has its origin of replication, it has canamycin. We will mix our spike gene which we amplified using PCR. You saw here this PCR product, and we know our product has restriction enzyme sites as well, but we are not going to use them in this particular step. We will use them and we will subclone from here to bacterial expression vector. So we mix vector with the insert. Our uh, insert is this spike gene. And we have the DNA ligase, etc. And I 